Okay, we're back with Trump Week, the show you love to hate. <laughs> true. <laughs> Very true. Tim Apicella and Cynthia Sinclair. What's the lay for, Cynthia? I was awarded a scholarship for school next year from the American Business Women's Association. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Wonderful. It was pretty special because it's my second year in a row for winning the same scholarship. Oh, uh, boring. <laughs> boring. <laughs> no, pretty special because they don't. Apparently, this is like a really rare thing that never happens that they actually award the same the scholarship to the same person over. I know the scholarship reflects the intensity of your education and thus the intensity of your participation here. That's right. So let's talk about <laughs> Trump Week this week. We're entitling this show Unleashing the Misogynists in the Base, having to do with all these statutes, incredible footage <clears throat> on TV about the legislative you know, actions and the immediate signatures of these bills by the governors, immediate. <sighs> Nothing moves that fast in any state. The footnote, you know, there was a really interesting article that I saw this week about how, you know, the states where the base is most concentrated, those states are the worst states to live in. Right. You know, they're, they're, they don't have social services, they're poor, uh, you, you, you vote a suppression, all the worst things. You'd never go to those states. You'd never want to live in those states. And those are the states where all these things, terrible things happen. People are hurting themselves. they shooting themselves in the foot. Right. Okay, the subtitle is, it'll be much worse after Roe v. Wade is gone. And that's off an article in the Times uh, yesterday, today, where um, this fellow uh, he looked at Roe v. Wade before Roe v. Wade, how, how the abortion practice worked, what was happening in the country over abortions. And then, you know, life after Roe v. Wade is life with the statutes that were just adopted this week. It's going to be much worse for women, much worse for women. I'm so sorry. Okay, Tim, what happened? Well, what happened was this is all part of the chess game. The, these strategies are all being put in place. They're starting to actually move the chess pieces. Because before you put in, uh, you enact laws like this in, um, be it, you know, Georgia or Alabama or whatever, um, you've got to have the judges in place. Mm -hmm. So that was the first part of the chess game, and now they're in place. Right. It's and a now, step transaction. Then yes, a step this is transaction. All a strategy. Right. Yeah. And Kavanaugh was the the bookend over here, and right. now we got uh, you know these various little you know um, killing by a thousand cuts that we've been that they've been doing for the past several years, and now. They're, 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 they, got, they got arrogance, they got confidence, and they are putting these statutes through, and the men in these legislatures are happy to pass them immediately. What, Governors are happy to sign them. What great hubris, and I can't think of a better lightning right. rod issue between now and 2020 election right. than this one, right. to, to awaken the apathetic voter, be it male or female, to get out of their chair and say, enough is enough, we are going to vote this election. I can't think of a better lightning rod so. issue than this. In the, meanwhile, in the meanwhile, if you get involved in an abortion on either the medical side or, and this is not like it was before Roe v. Wade, uh, on, the, on the, um, you know, the pregnant woman's side, you can get to go to jail for life. You know, like 99 years. If you're a doctor. If you're a doctor. Doctor, doctor or um, a, a, a woman. I mean, really, it's a, a, what did Trump say? He wants to punish the women. Punish the women. That? No punishment for the, for the father. None. But for the woman, there has to be some kind of punishment well, when he was asked if they should go to jail. And let's he said, put that yeah. in context, though. When did that comment come out? And that was before the election with Chris, Chris Matthews' interview in one of the, um, the forum interviews, the townhouse so, forum interviews. And that raises a really interesting point. I put it to both of you. So is, this respon is, is Trump responsible for this? Did he somehow foment? Um, we, know, we know he made the appointment on Kavanaugh, um, and he has never taken a position against well, actually, years ago, he was pro-abortion. Uh, pro now he's been anti-abortion. And he's, the question is, all these statutes that we saw this week, has Trump somehow encouraged them? Yes. So I believe so. What's yeah. your I think he got on the it? phone. Yeah. <laughs> Called up each governor and said, let's make this happen. Well, I don't know as I believe that it was him specifically. No. We've got kind of a silent manipulator behind him and the vice president. And Pence has been... Rabid about anti-abortion right. and anti-LGBTQ and all of these things, and so I think Trump relies a lot on what somebody else tells him to do, and what the main Republican panel of old white guys is what I like to call them, right? What they want, he's like, okay, I I'm your Republican yeah. president. So they're kind of like in collusion together, Cynthia. I think. 
I think, you know, Trump has the, the buck stops with Trump. He, right. He's the one who makes these ideological decisions and right. all that. Um, and, and then you see these decisions being implemented by others around him right. who are yes men. Right. You know, and uh, that's, that's what's happening with, uh, with um, what's his name, the Attorney General. Bar, yeah. Bar. <clears throat> you know, he's, he's merely an agent for Trump. He's a stooge. Right. Um, and I think we have to recognize that going forward. It's Trump and stooges. But at the end of the day, <laughs> it's always Trump. He's the right. one creating this policy. Absolutely. Other I people agree. are doing the mouthpiece, including yeah. the vice president. Yeah. Right. There's been behind the scenes work. We just don't see it. Right. Our, our, our news has been with so many distractions and, and you know, being entertained with so many different events that Trump puts out there every day, they don't have time to follow Pence and find out what he's doing behind the scenes. Right. And I'm certain that this did, didn't come to play all of a sudden. This is a planned strategy, in my opinion. Yeah, the one thing that I'm absolutely just appalled about is that there's no provision for rape or incest. Think what kind of animal would not want to allow someone to have access to an abortion if that's what they want to do, if they've been raped? Or there's a story well, right, of a 12-year-old girl it's who's... It's telltale. Because, you know, even if there were an exception for rape or incest, it's still an anti-abortion bill. Right. Correct. It still puts people in jail right. for abortion. It still squashes the possibility of abortion in that state. So, you know, I'm not... I mean, it goes, it goes 99.9. Um, the, the, the fact that it doesn't have rape... Or uh, incest exceptions right. doesn't mean no, that much to me. No, this was known to, to be me. this was known <laughs> to be the, the law that's passed that's going to go to the Supreme Court. That's what they're planning that's to do. They want, They've already right. announced that's what we intended to do. Right. Wouldn't you think that they would want to take out the rape and incest portion of that and get the bill in front of the Supreme Court without without these without things the that are going to make it I mean, look bad? Yeah. Well, they, they want these bills to be outrageous. That's why there are no exceptions for rape and incest. Totally outrageous. But if you want to test the Supreme and Court, the Supreme Court to carve that out, you know. Apparently, there's a, a small little addendum in that whole um, thing that they're putting together, also that is going to uh, inhibit any kind of reproductive, uh, you know, the pill, any kind of uh, protection, anything like that. Right, and and it's, it's anything done by the mother, uh, other than abortion to damage the fetus, right? right. Uh, and that includes the, uh, you know, the morning after pill and all that stuff. Right. Well, what about listening to Fox the News? That'll damage the fetus. I don't fetus. know about the morning <laughs> after. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's intended to be as broad as it can possibly right. be, address any possibility, cut right. all the options off for the woman. Right. Um, my, my goodness gracious. Well, you know, and, Georgia you know, is trying to, um, we were just talking about this a few minutes ago, Georgia is going to try to pull out all of its the entertainment industry is going to pull out all of its stuff down there in Georgia because they've got a really big movie-making machine out there in Atlanta. Yeah. So like I said, this is a lightning rod issue, and you're going to see economic boycott of those states. Um, certainly you're going to see mm -hmm. this reflect itself when it comes to you know, re-election time for these state senators and congressmen well, in Alabama and do, Missouri. Don't, and, don't you feel this is kind of... A uh, it's kind of a, a revolution, a civil war, a, a grand divide. On social it's, issues. On social issues. This is, for those states, uh, Georgia, Alabama, others, Missouri, um, do this. It's just a tremendous divide in the, in the population. It's a, the whole country is fighting with itself. Well, yes. we, we are purpose. in total divisiveness. Well, you right. remember you mentioned Huey Long several shows. And this is right up Huey Long, Governor of Louisiana, this is right up his game plan of, of social issues that separate populations. They're divisive, right. and it's just what they need for right. you know to get the, the attention off of other issues. Number one, but also uh, galvanize their support base, and it's doing just that. Right, it's tearing the country apart. Yes, it is absolutely. Okay, okay. I and mean, this is you know, I mean, people people say, well, it'll it'll be okay, it'll be okay, it'll all work out. It's not all work out. <clears throat> Let's go to Congress for a minute. You know, uh, my, my great concern is that, uh, the, that the administration is denying Congress anything it wants. Right. It's not turning over documents. It's not appearing to testify. It's stopping Mueller right now. Mueller has not, there's no date for Mueller to testify. Right. Um, <clears throat> Congress is like being marginalized. Uh, Congress is being sent away you know, with, with nothing. They, right. they, can't, they can't do their duty. They can't even find out what happened. 
And it reminds me so much of the Enabling Act of 1933 in Absolutely Germany. Absolutely, it is. The, you know, the Reichstag was marginalized, cut off, neutralized. Not, you know, they have no effect. That's what's happening in mm -hmm. Congress. Congress has been, what do you want to call it, um, vestigial uh, since his administration began, and it's right. getting worse. Every comments? Day. Comments? Well, the, Every day it gets yeah, worse. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Well, the 12-page letter that was sent you know, from the White House to the committee um, basically says the Dems are looking into embarrass the president. That's one of their, you know, oh, yeah, one right. of their basis of, of, of why we're not going to play ball with Congress. They're looking to embarrass them. Uh, number two was um, no do-overs. You know, you're not going to get another do-over. So that's why we're going to prevent anyone from testifying, and that's why we're not going to give out records. Um, I don't know if that's, you know, legal provisions it's to not. deny a subpoena from Congress. It doesn't it's seem not. to be to me, but uh, that's the game they're playing. And I think if you look at it, is they don't want to embarrass the uh, the president, and and they're saying, well, you know, the Democrats want to carry this investigation on all through the you know the 2019, 2020 to have this drip and drab out and and hurt the presidency and chances for reelection. Well, I I remember a thing called Benghazi hearings that went on mm. for years to damage Clinton, hey. and, and you know, so it's, it's very hypocritical in my mind. And by the way, if 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 they would have, if Barr would have shared the redacted portion of Mueller's, um, you know, report, maybe they wouldn't have to subpoena all these people. Right. You know, maybe they, the answers would have been there, but they have no choice because you didn't give us the redacted portion of that report. And so what are we going to do to sit and go, oh, well, shucks, I guess that's okay. No, yeah. of course not. And now Flynn. Oh, yeah. Flynn, who was Flynn. actually approached by someone in the Trump administration to try to change his story. Yeah, well, that's, a, that's obstruction. I mean, there is, is obstruction here. They, they have a, I mean, Flynn even turned over a recording, a, a voice recording uh, yeah. of Trump's lawyers calling his lawyer, leaving a message about how, you know, is there a way we can change this? You know, Donald really loves him and blah, blah, blah. So, but you know what they're saying, and, and this is the interesting part, and it plays through the press, which I think you said it was naive, the press, um, that... Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're not well motivated. We are going to claim that uh, all these guys who want all this information don't, don't have a, a purity of thought, uh, that their, their, um, their intentions are wrong, and therefore we're not going to give them anything. Now, you can apply that to anything. You know, if you can get that through, if you can confirm that as a reason not to respond to subpoenas and requests for appearances and the like, um, then you can stop. You can stop Congress. Well, you have no rule of law then. And then you become a king or an emperor or well, a that's, dictator, that's whatever happening. you want to call it. Let's review it. You know, Congress is unable mm. to do anything. Uh, not only because he's not responding to them, but but we, you have this divisive divisiveness within Congress between the Senate and the House. The only thing mm, this is really interesting. The only thing he can get through is in the Senate alone, which is advice and consent on judicial appointments. Right. And he's putting all his stooge judges, may I say that? Yes. Uh, you know, judges who agree with him, who he believes are, you know, right. a conservative side. There was one appointed the other day and it sort of slid in. A woman, Vitter, I think was Oh, that. the woman who wouldn't She's even... She's anti-abortion. Yeah. And she wouldn't even say whether or not she was. But the, the paper reported she was anti-abortion. Of course she is. Well known to be. But, but refused to say it when she was being so, so interviewed. Congress That's the important part. Congress is... All Congress is doing is confirming, you know, these judges that he... been at a rapid rate, we don't hear about all of them. Right. So, you know, what you have is Congress is neutralized. The judiciary is being neutralized or they're being... Remade, yeah. Re, re, reorganized completely to support him. Uh, and we're going to see that when these cases like Roe v. Wade uh, get up to yeah. the Supreme Court. And, well, actually, in the lower yeah. courts, too. Lower right. Courts too. Uh, because little by little, it's turning mm -hmm. uh, into a, a Trump court system. And, of course, Trump is, you know, he's in charge of everything, running his, um, what, his uh, sole, sole proprietorship mm -hmm. government. You know? Right where everybody speaks his word, and if you don't, right. you're out. So, um, um, gee whiz, I mean, it's the end of constitutional government here. How yeah. can we recover? How can we return? We can. How can we make America democratic again? I said it. Okay, you did say it. <laughs> um, I, I, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. If, if the courts are not going to play ball, or they'll play ball, but they've already, the deck has already been stacked, so to speak, 
Um, it will be up to the individual voter to get outraged and call their congressman, senator, and say, this is how I feel, this is how I, you know, I want this to stop. And only if they get flooded with protest calls mm -hmm. may they now stand up and say, okay, the legislature now needs to act. You know, we need to act. And, but that's, that. that's very rare, you know, that's a very rare concept. I, now. If I were going to send a message to all the Democratic legislators, I mean, in Congress, I would say we stop making every email you send me ask for money. Ask for my support. Yeah. Ask, ask for, for my vote, petition. not my money. Right. Ask for my vote. Uh, the money, you know, can do it once in a while, but not every single, so it, it's a turnoff, and people right. don't respond to that. I agree. Um, but if they would simply say, check the box or leave a short message and uh, sign a petition, no money, just sign a petition, then I think they get much, they get the, you get the, the, that kind of popular, you know, upswell uh, is, of, of opinion, and, and that would help. We're not, we're losing a lot of people who might, who might check the box because we're always asking for money. And that's the problem when you hire consultants. You know, the organization has a mission. You lose or you, 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 you diminish the message when you hire consultants when they're professional fundraisers. And somehow they get at the head of the table and they set the agenda for that organization. I couldn't agree with you more because there's nothing than a bigger too. turnoff than 20 messages in two weeks about you need to, you know, campaign. Uh, money. It's always yeah, about money. money. If yeah. they would just ask me my opinion, I'm happy to give it yeah. to them. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let's move off Congress. I mean, Congress is in big kimchi well, here. Can and, I say one last thing first, yeah. though? Um, I, you made a comment a minute ago about how Congress can't do anything because they don't have the unredacted report. They don't have the supporting documents. I, I disagree with you. I think they have plenty enough to in do there what? to raise an impeachment and start it now. The minute they do that, it opens their ability to access records better. That's true. They can easily step over this, we're not going to give you listening. anything. I hope you're listening. It's, it's not true. true. It's very true. And it's true. They don't yeah, have But right now, they do don't that. have impeachment, and they have 27, count them, 27 investigations going on. That's built for delay. That's built it is. for, for delay. no That's result. All it's about. A nothing burger. Right. Uh, in the end, I and, agree. But they can. They have a, a a perfect intention, so to speak. If you want to look at their intention right. and asking for documents, um, that you know we we have an impeachment process going on. Right. And we're and we're going to ask for these documents, and you can't say no. Of course, that would go. Or the judge could go, well, yeah, I can. Well, they have <laughs> more than plenty too. enough to start it. Yeah, That's what they do. They have you. more than plenty you, enough to start you it. Have, you have it. resisted the notion of impeachment. For I have. I have. Are, are you changing? Are but, you coming well, over? you know, there's every week is a new, a new brew here, you know. And so <laughs> if you stay with the old brew and stick to it, then what's that say about you? Um, yeah, we have the right to look at developing situations here and go, I need to kind of reconsider where I stand on where this position. I, I agree. I still love the idea of a censor, but you know what? If you're not going to, if you're going to be, if, if the constitution is going to be thrown in peril and risk, then right. find the reason to get the documents and there's no getting out of it. Right. And if that means an impeachment hearing, right. so be it. Censure would not so allow I'm there. that. I'm there. All right. Yeah. All right. Welcome to the club. And it's only because you need to get those documents. You have to. And you exactly. Can't, and you can't stop Congress from their, their, their obligation, their constitutional duty. Right. So that's why we need to get out of the crisis. Right. And by doing so, the impeachment will get us there. So. Yeah. Right. And even, I think, if, even if they're not able to actually impeach him. Right. Exactly. It's okay. Let's, let's get this all turned up so we can you know, get on the right path anyway. Right. I think Nancy and, Pelosi is well. Show, we can demonstrate De exactly. that the Democrats can do stuff. Yes, because they're right. not. Right. Right now, well, it's not clear they can do stuff. Because they're sorry. doing stuff. They're putting yeah. stuff to the Senate, but it's not going anywhere. So it looks like they're not doing anything, even though they are. Here's yeah. the problem and with Democrats. And that's what's frustrating for me. Here's the problem with Democrats. They assume that impeachment will be that akin to what happened to um, Bill Clinton. They really should look at the impeachment to say, what was this more like? And that was Richard Nixon. Yes, thank you. Exactly. Okay? And that's why they're shaking in their boots, because they remember that the poll numbers with Bill Clinton, 66%. That's what he had from the start through the end of his impeachment process. Likeable guy. 66%. Well, part of the reason why is because, you know, when Clinton was done with his terms, we were in the black. The country was in the black. We were not in the red anymore. That's true. Now... Trump has got us, what, trillions of dollars in the first year, six months, I mean, even? I think we were Well, trillions. there are two factors, I think, that, are, that, are got, that are got, we got to follow as threads. <clears throat> Number one is the economy. Right. The economy is pretty good now, you know, and uh, he's taking, well, he made this big speech in Louisiana. That's where Huey Long used to live in. 
I had this big speech in Louisiana about how wonderful the economy was and that he was responsible and everybody should appreciate that. Yes. Um, the economy may not really last. I think, you know, because of the tariff thing, yeah. um, both sides, you know, our side and, and the China side may right. create global, global problems. And, and um, you know, then he may not have that as an argument. We should watch that. Well, I think that's why he's rolled back on his tariffs to Canada and his tariffs to Mexico, to Mexico yeah. because he's trying to make up for the fact that he has just screwed over a whole lot of people. Yeah. Well, and, and ultimately, <laughs> China one, ultimately right? it's going to well. come back on us. The other, the, other, the other factor, the other process we have to work, and you wanted to talk about this, uh, is the Middle East and, you know, his right. diplomatic relations. I mean, you could say that it's only a trade war with China, but it's affecting our diplomatic relations with China, too. Um, and I mean, there's it, it, a connection there. And, and, of course, what he's doing with Iran is, is, is um, beating drums for war. Um, I really worry about that. This yes. whole thing could go up in a tinderbox. This yeah. sounds like the guns of August, you and know. It is. It will. World War One. It's, it's, right? it's a trip hammer, and it's a second, you know, like chain reaction kind of thing. And and, and it's going, you know, it's very risky what he's doing. Yeah. Well, what what Donald Rumsfeld and Dick Cheney was for the um, the sets the, the stagecraft to get involved with Iraq. Bolton is for Iran. Yeah. Absolutely. We, you know, it's well known that he's been itching to get it, you know, right. get it on with Iran on for, for, while, for a yeah. decade or more. Right. And so Trump seems to have, you know, that maybe that's why he picked him. You know, I don't okay. know why. I'm, I'm sure that's true. Yeah. I agree. I think that's why he picked him. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, oh, you, we got the tail that wags the dog here. Yeah. You know. Representative Jim Hines from, uh, he's a Democrat from Connecticut on the Intel Committee. Um, he made a list, and I thought it was really comprehensive, and it is... Trump's administration's actions towards Iran. First, he withdraws from the Iran nuclear deal. Then he reimposes sanctions. Then he, this is for me, I think the most important and explosive and igniting thing that he did was designating the Islamic Revolutionary Guard as a terrorist organization. This is, wait a minute, their main army, and he's, he's well, calling they, them they all terrorists. They designated our army as a terrorist organization. Right. Well, within a few days, they did the same thing right. back to us. Then they're but they're doing the, worse things than that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is only beginning now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because then it goes next to Then we move the USA Lincoln to the Middle East group. Then um, 120,000 troops he's talking about. And what it is is what this representative anyway said was that you know, it's dangerous because it forces them to adopt an aggressive pos posture, which Trump can then say, oh, look, they're being aggressive. Well, this goes... Even this though goes, he forced them into it, right? If it's, if it's them or someone else, somewhere else in the world, who knows where he can generate violence, he can do it. Well, uh, it's like, right. you know, he generated these, these, these bills in the, in the South. Right. He can generate all these negative, hateful things. And so <clears throat> moving on to 2020, uh, we get closer to that election. And you keep on thinking of Michael Cohn's uh, warning. He's not going to uh, leave. You know, he's not going to leave easily. Right. Uh, or, or he's not going to, my view, he, he may not have an election at all. Put right. the election off. Absolutely. Kick it down the road. Go back to 2012. If, if we're at war, if we're involved oh, in some, it. you yeah. know, some, some fisticuffs or maybe multiple fisticuffs, uh, I can see him saying, we have a national emergency mm -hmm. here. And I don't think we should have an election. We're not going to have an election. Who would stop him? Can you have an election if the president doesn't come? Uh, you know, I'm really worried about yeah. that. And I think both of those threads are going to play out between now and 2020. But we, we've identified a long time ago that, you know, potential wars in Iran, Venezuela, North Korea, these were the shiny object distractions that he needed to right. get away from the Mueller report. Right. Um, so it's still beneficial for him to keep these conflicts on a plate, spinning by a long stick. <laughs> and have multiple of them doing it at the same time as right. we progress to the election in 2020. Right. It serves its purpose to have potential conflicts always spinning in the air. They sure. can just bring one down and, and use it. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, you mentioned earlier, and I think we should, uh, we should have a little discussion about this before we close, and that is the press. How is the press reacting to this? In a funny way, they're naive. In a funny way, you know, they're not, they don't seem to be recognized the emergency of it. I mean, for the country, for the Constitution for our future as a democracy. Uh, Frank Bruni wrote a great piece. I agree. I sent it to you guys. Uh, it was good. I'd already, I'd already put down a quote from that piece. It was so yeah. good, yeah. You want, you want to... Sure, you want me to? It talks about Donald, and the title, I love it. The title is Donald Trump is not America. Uh, it says he envies Orban, Putin, and their ilk. 
They don't have to deal with so much disrespect and dissent. They just crush it. His designs on Independence Day, have you heard about this stuff? Oh, yeah. Some big deal, right? The, the parade. Oh, yeah. So, all like around, Macron, right, he him. wants to be like the French. Um, his designs on Independence Day call to mind those sorts of leaders. Their vanities, shameless, an equation of national interest with self-interest. And, you know, for this whole thing with Iran, there are British generals, there are... Um, so many people, if I can come up with this, see other officials, Europeans, Iraqis, members of both parties in Congress, and some senior officials within the Trump administration that say that um, Iran's moves are defensive and, and Unless not aggressive. we forget immigration. Where oh, gosh. He, he said, uh, I think it was this morning or, or yesterday, right. he said he had an immigration plan. We didn't know the details, any of the details, um, that was going to make uh, America the envy of the world. Really? Uh, so far, it's more like the laughing stock of the world. Right. Um, but anyway, I want to get back to the press thing. So, the press in general has a big part in all of this process we've been talking about. I agree. Have they been doing a job? What should they do that's different? Thoughts? They need to diversify their reporting. And I'm sorry, but 80% of the reporting is on the, you know, the constitutional crisis, the obstruction of justice, and the you know, inability for. Uh, Jerry Nadler and in Congress to get these these subpoenas fulfilled. Stop spending eighty percent on that. You know, maybe give it forty percent. You've got to cover these other issues, and right. they're just they just don't have enough time, airtime to do it. Right? They don't. Well, each like when you watch MSNBC for one, um, you know, they've got all these shows back to back. Yet all the shows are saying the same, same thing. thing. I know, it's like you've got time. And they're repeating themselves over and over. And they're just repeating themselves over and over. And it's like every once in a while, like, Rachel's pretty good about saying stuff that nobody else is saying. She does a lot of research. Yeah, she does a lot of research, and she says stuff that not everybody is saying, which I think is important. But, you know, one of the things that the press is doing that I think is good is they're showing these clips of 2012 when um, Trump was saying he was accusing Obama of starting in a war with Iran, with Iran specifically, um, so that he could get reelected. And I thought, is he trying to take his own advice here? And that's what he's trying to do. He, yeah. you know, accuses, and we go back with the projection thing, you know, he, whatever he's accusing someone else of it's, doing, he's guilty of doing it. is the thing that he projection. is going to do yeah. or wants to do. And he, so I try to judge everything that comes out of his mouth with that well, view of projection. Let me offer a thought. What we need is a countervailing group or person, a countervailing leader, somebody who can call him call yeah. him on all this stuff, including, yes. for example, uh, his failure to get involved in the group that's trying to do, uh, you know, terror, terror reduction uh, in New Zealand, you know, right, led by New Zealand. Thing, right? And Macron is involved in that. Right. But for some reason, well, I know the reason, uh, Trump and the U.S. is not involved. Incredible, incredible. incredible. Yeah, incredible. I mean, you know, what are we saying? You know, it's okay. It's okay to yeah. walk into a, a, a church and shoot people. Very fine people on both Very sides. Very fine people on both sides, including the ones who are dead. Oh. Uh, you know, extraordinary. So, yeah. you know, I guess the question is, uh, who can respond to him? If there are 23 candidates out there uh, who are Democratic, um, and they have to distinguish themselves against the others, so by definition, they have to undermine the other candidates. Who can speak at the same level or at, a, at hopefully a, a nearby level uh, to answer what he's doing and to hold him accountable? It's not happening in Congress. Uh, and it's not happening among those candidates. And, and Elizabeth Warren is getting pretty vocal. Well, I've seen her kind of stepping up. She's always, been very, vocal, up. She's always to, been very vocal. They have to think differently, I think. Yeah. The I, candidates okay. have to say, look, we, we all concede that A and B, whoever A and B are, will be our candidates. Yeah. Right. We're going to make a choice. We're going to make a, a, a consensus, a pact. a pact, a pact. And those will be our leaders in the party and in this campaign, right. and we all, we all get behind them, whoever they are, and they will speak for all of us, and they will respond and hold him accountable on every single thing between now and the election. What I do you think? Agree. I, I think agree. that's the only way it's going to happen, because if they start tearing each other apart, and by the time you get to the general election, uh, you're, you know, you're, your final candidate's been so tarnished and beat up, that they may not do all that well in the general election. Provided the election is even safe and secure anyway. Two counties in Florida were hacked, we know for sure. We and know why didn't they tell right us? Now. Why didn't they tell us? And then I saw an article about um, this big hacker convention thing. They had a group of children, right? One 11 year old hacked the voting machine in 
less than 15 minutes. Yeah. And the rest of them, all of the group, they all okay. were able to do it within right. an hour. You've got to tune in next week because my <laughs> observation is these shows get more interesting because what's <laughs> happening gets more interesting. Yeah, no and break. It, we it, didn't even have time for a break It threatens us <laughs> more. It hurts us more. But we need to do it. And right. uh, I really enjoy you guys doing it. And, uh, and uh, next time, maybe you'll tell us how you really feel. We'll try. <laughs> we'll dig it up. I don't ever do that. <laughs> Thank you. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha.